Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to answer a few of your questions. I know that your comments have been piling up on some of my videos and I have about 30 in my inbox that I haven't got to. I do read them all. It just takes me a while sometimes to, you know, respond and write them out. So I figured it's nice to make these little videos every once in a while so that everyone can then see the answer. So let's start with the first one and it is from Stephanie and she asks, where can we get vulcanized rubber stamps? Now these are the older type of red stamps and if you watch in my videos when I use those stamps, you'll see just what type they are. They're thin, they usually come on a sheet and they are not like the, the clear kind of newer stamps. You want something that you're sure is not going to melt. So they're the thinner type, you can buy them online and I do leave links for anything that I use down in the description. Now, the ones that I had, I had mentioned in one of my videos that I bought years ago. I think I bought them like on eBay and they came in like whole entire sheets and I would just cut out the ones that I wanted to use. So um, you can look there. I did find a couple on Amazon and I did put the links below. So you might want to check those out, see what kind they are. Um, you can always, you know, find older ones a lot of time for resale and those are great. So. There's no way I can tell you exactly like what you have, you know, what type it is. So yeah, but you can definitely find them online. You can definitely find them on Amazon. I know that I've seen them multiple times on eBay. So that's one hint for that. And again, read below in the description and I always put links in. So the next question I'm gonna read, because it's a little long. And it says, wonderful video. Do you find that the 80 watt soldering iron also works for melting well for lead-free soldering without lumps, um, et cetera. In your blog and book, you were suggesting 100 watt. Yeah, I do suggest 100 watt. I suggest the highest wattage you can find. 80 watt seems to work. Uh, the thing of it is lead-free solder melts at a bit of a higher temperature than regular lead solder that you would use for stained glass. So once again, when you're making jewelry or any kind of container, you know, something that's gonna be handled, especially jewelry, um, you always wanna use lead-free solder. So you need to have a soldering iron that's gonna be able to melt that solder and make it nice and smooth. So I do recommend um, 80 or above. Yeah, if you can find 100 watt, you're golden. But that's my answer for that. Uh, let's see, this is painting with metallic gold alcohol ink. And this is from Sharon. Okay, the next question is not from a soldering video, but it's from one I did about how to paint with alcohol ink and using gold in alcohol ink. And Sharon Grace asks how I scan my artwork. And I use Yupo paper, which is like plasticky, very thin, and it comes in different trans, like there's like opaque and translucent. I use like a, a translucent kind. And I just use my regular scanner. It's like a printer, HP printer scanner. And I just scan them on there. I scan them onto my computer. I open them up in a um, program. You can use any kind of like painting program that you have. You can get freeware like GIMP online. You can do it there. Um, and then from there you can, you know, edit it. You can crop it, you can resize it, you can change the colors and do all that. But yeah, I don't use anything special or spectacular for that. I just use regular, um, home printer scanner. And another thing about that is if you are going to use a paper or like say you you do alcohol ink on glass or you're doing on translucent paper, you definitely want to put like a white piece of paper behind that or uh, it's not going to scan right because you need to have that white background behind it. So there's a hint. That might have been what you were getting at. Okay, the next comment is on the Easy Soft Soldered Pendant project and that's the one where I used that green cabochon and we did some um, metal work at the top and put a bail on it we made a cool pendant and they asked what type of solder I use for that and again I use just lead free solder now the solder that you don't want to use is the solder for stained glass that is lead solder over the years they have developed solder for stained glass that is lead free solder and that's the kind of thing that you want you want something that is jewelry safe and if it says that it's for jewelry even better and again i always leave links in the descriptions below the videos for how you can get and where you can get uh, what i use in my video and if it's something that i've had for a while that I might not have like the exact item that I can show you. I'll find like the closest that I can find to it and I'll share a link for that. So always check in the description. Let's see. Okay, here's kind of a longer question that I got from Jenny and the question is on the video 
called Organic Style Copper Bezel DIY where I take a piece of copper and I cut a rectangle and then I create a bezel and solder it and I use a butane torch in that video. And here's what she asks. She says, why do we need a solder gun and a butane torch? Um, and now the way I explain it in the video is yeah, you can use a soldering iron, that is fine, but when you're doing a piece that is larger and has more surface area, where you wanna keep it kind of heated all over, you're gonna have a hard time with your soldering iron because once you move your soldering iron from one point to the next, it's gonna start to cool where you moved it from. So if you have a little hand butane torch, like um, just the little mini ones, and actually I think I linked to them in the description of that video, it just works so much easier. You can cut little pieces of your solder, you can set it around, and then you can just torch it and that works great. You can do that project with a soldering iron, but it's gonna take you a lot longer and it's going to be more hassle. So if you have a little butane torch, you know, you don't need anything with canisters of gas or anything like that, just a little butane torch, the kind you make creme brulee with, <laughs> you can just use that, just like I show you in the video. So that is why. But I do have it listed as, you know, you can also use a soldering iron with it, which you can. Uh, let's see, and she always asks me, and she, she also asks me what is the solder, and I, I explained that in the video. I recently did a video on a corroded, or more than one corroded soldering iron tip, and showing you how I, you know, change those tips out, or, you know, how to go about, like, trying to get the tips apart, and this and that, and someone asks what, what one do I recommend? And uh, I always say to get something that's the middle of the road, there isn't an exact brand I can tell you. And I think that as long as you're looking for the wattage that's a little higher, you'll be fine. Um, look in stained glass catalogs, that's a great place to start. I did a review last week on a very inexpensive iron that I bought on Amazon and you should totally check that out if you want to get into soldering and you don't have a soldering iron, uh, that's a great one to start with, I think. So. Yeah, check that out and you don't have to spend a ton to begin with and it's always good to, you know, don't get the cheapest, don't get the most expensive when you're starting out. Try to find middle of the road, try to find something that's a little bit on the more inexpensive side um, that isn't a piece of junk. I've been to big box craft stores where I've seen them for five, ten dollars and they're like 20 watt irons. You're not going to melt anything with that soldering iron. So just skip over those, but look for that wattage. It's very important. All right, let's see what's next. Again, someone asked again about the vulcanized rubber stamps. They're saying that there's only a couple that come up when I search. That's right, there's only a couple that come up when you search. They're kind of hard to find. They're the old fashioned type. And like I said, I got lucky. You can sometimes find on eBay like an entire sheet. And it doesn't have to be like of a design, like something like specific. You just need that texture, you know? I mean, maybe you want like something curved as opposed to a straight line. You know, you might you know want to head towards something like that, but um, that's your personal taste, you know, but you just want something with a texture. You can also buy pieces of vulcanized, the exact red rubber that they use for the stamps. I've seen it sold in blocks, thin blocks, sheets, and you can like carve your own. Get a like little carving set or exacto knife or even the kind of carving sets you use for like just general crafts or um, sculpting. So yeah, you can definitely make your own as well. Let's see, next question comes from Amazon. Oh, the book. Last time I looked on Amazon, your book, Soldered Alchemy, was $70. Yeah, I know, it's crazy, but guess what? I just got my uh, rights reverted, so I am working on doing that uh, reprint, so stay tuned. I hope to have it up very soon. And I know I keep saying that, but now that I got the legal letter in the mail, now I'm like really on it. Uh, and let's see, Sharon asks, she wants to do the Luna Moth type of embossed copper, but the cuddle bug and plates are $140. Yeah, they're expensive. Um, I would say try to get one second hand or get a used one, but the thing about that is you don't want one that someone may have abused. So if you can get a new one, and I mean, I bought mine at I think it was like Joanne's Crafts like years ago. And I knew it was like $80 or something. It was kind of like out of my budget, it was expensive. And I just waited until they went on sale and they had like a 30 or 40% off coupon. And I landed up getting it for like 
really cheap. I got a really good deal. And I've noticed as the years have gone by that a lot of the larger big box craft stores, again, they stopped offering those one item for 40% off. And I'm kind of disappointed about that. You know, when my kids were little, my one daughter was really into soap making, <laughs> which is a lot of fun, like the glycerin soap. You just melt and pour. It's called melt and pour. And we used to go and we'd get the giant tub of um, glycerin soap that you just cut chunks of it out and she can melt it and mix stuff in. We used to get that $50 thing, I'd get it 40% off. And I'd be like, yeah, here, make soap. You know, we'd have a good time with that. But I haven't seen those coupons anymore. And you know, I know that Michael's, you know, if you can be a rewards member to whatever store that they'll, you know, there's points and whatnot and this and that. And you know, you can get a small discount, maybe 20% off and uh, keep your eyes open for sales and this and that. But as far as like the cuddle bug goes, there are many different types of the same kind of machine. Um, look around, find one, maybe you can find someone on like Facebook Marketplace who, you know, never really used it a lot and you might get a deal. Make somebody an offer, say, hey, I'll give you, maybe they're asking 30, say, I'll give you 20 bucks for it and see what they say. So yeah, just keep your eyes peeled and watch for sales as best you can. You know, the holiday season is coming up, we're in Q4 now and you're gonna see good, you should be seeing good sales on, you know, uh, everything across the board, but as well, you know, craft supplies and that kind of thing. So keep your eyes open for that. Oh, okay. So Create Good FX asked on my new video that I did last week of the soldering iron review, the soldering iron I bought on Amazon. They said, uh, can you please tell me what temp you used for the decorative dots? I've always have trouble with them. I thought when the solder gets spiky, it's because the iron gets too cool. That's true. Um, but it looks like when it happened in the video, you added more flux. I always use a lot of flux. <laughs> but um, yeah, when I did that video, and it's funny because I didn't think of it until I got this message, <laughs> or I would have mentioned it in the video, and it was a temperature controlled soldering iron, right? So it had a little, you know, little buttons on the, on the, right on the handle, like it didn't have an external rheostat, it had it like built in or you could adjust the temperature. And I realized after I read her message, or it could be a he, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> After I read this message, I realized, huh, I didn't even adjust the temperature. <laughs> I had it like whatever I had it set at in the video, and I do say it in the video, it's like six something. Um, I just went right through, but yeah, I do use a lot of flux. And um, I did have a young man contact me on Instagram, and he's interested in a little bit of a different type of soldering that is a little bit more contemporary, and um, I am going to do a video on that, so stay tuned. I'm not gonna talk all about it right now because I don't wanna ruin the surprise. But if you are watching, you know just what I'm talking about if you're the person who messaged me. Let's see. A lot of great, a lot of nice comments, a lot of thoughtful comments, thank you, I really appreciate it. All right, so on the video of the, um, sorry, I have to keep taking my glasses on and off because I can't, I need them to read the questions. Um, Dora asks on the random Amazon soldering iron review video, uh, she says she noticed that I had a roll of solder that came with the iron that was very thin, but I have used a much thicker solder. Yeah, that's the lead-free jewelry solder that I buy. So I do not recommend using anything that comes with the package unless it is like guaranteed lead-free and says it's for jewelry. Okay, Full Circle asks on Easy Beautiful Soft Solder Gem Pendant. Gorgeous, what type of wire do you use? I forgot what type of wire I used. I either use, and I'm sure I have it in the video, I either use copper wire or I use silver plated wire. That's it. So it's one of those two. Okay, here's another question about the organic style copper bezel DIY. Maybe I better go back to that video and read what I wrote in the description because now I have two questions about can you use a soldering iron for it or do you need a torch? And I answered that earlier. Yes, you can use a soldering iron as long as it's a high wattage and you can get that temperature way up. And as you go and work around the bezel because you're working around a, you know, an oval or circular shaped object or whatever shape you make your bezel in, um, what I'm saying is you're not just soldering in one spot, you're going around an area. So as you move your soldering iron tip, it is going to cool when you move it. Uh, so with the torch, you have more of a control of keeping more of a larger area hot and melted. So yeah, I do recommend a butane torch for that, but you definitely can do it with a soldering iron. It's just gonna, like I said, take longer and be more uh, time consuming, more grueling. Uh, let's see. But yeah, you totally should get a butane torch. I mean, they're not expensive. You can get them uh, under $20, I think. And you know, you just get a can of butane and you fill it up when it's, 
when it you know runs out. And then if you make creme brulee, you know you can cook your sugar on there, which is what we do as well <laughs> with the same one. Uh, okay, last question I have is from Georgia Gem, and she commented on my video, how to instantly remove copper tarnish quick and easy. And that's a really cool, really short video. If you haven't seen it, you should check it up. I'll link it above and below. And I make a solution of something that everyone has in their kitchen cabinet, and it like instantly removes the tarnish from silver. It makes it bright and shiny. And she asks, will this hurt beads and gemstones? For instance, a beaded bracelet. Now, I really can't tell you. I really don't know. And you know, there are so many different stones. Each stone has a different kind of hardness. Some are harder, some are softer. A lot of stones that you buy are chemically treated, either they are dyed or they're hardened. They're put through processes to make them, you know, able to be used for jewelry. So it really depends. Now, if you have jewelry that has like pearls, obviously, you know, you're not going to put that into like any kind of strong solution, any kind of cleaning solution. That's a natural soft item that can very easily get damaged. Same with other kinds of stones. So I can't tell you because I don't know what you have, but if I were you go, you know, if you're shopping somewhere and there is a jewelry store there, go in there and ask them. Say, what do you recommend? I have the video only for metal and that's the only way I use it. I don't use it with any stone. Um, if you had something, you perhaps could make the solution and take something like a Q-tip cotton swab and dip it in there and only go over the parts that have the copper. And that could be possibly a way that you could do it where, you know, you're not going anywhere near your gemstones if you just need to brighten up a spot here or there. So that's about all I have for you today. I will be back very soon with a new video for you. I hope I touched on um, some of the major questions and I still will go through and write some responses to these tonight. And I hate to keep people hanging. I'm just, you know, we're all busy. And so I tried to give you a little bit of info there. Again, you know, you can ask any questions you like. I'll try to get to them if I can. And I hope this helped and I hope that you had a great weekend and I hope you have a great week ahead. And like I said, I'll be back again soon. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so down below and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you can get notified when I release a new video. And that's a pretty cool feature if you don't do that. So, all right, thanks again and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.